everybody and welcome back to my channel. So today is another kind of chit chatty get ready with me since I haven't filmed in a few days and I feel like I'm due. Um, I'm kind of feeling a fuller coverage glammy glam look today and one thing I dug out that I've kind of been like avoiding using I don't know if it's because it's so pretty and I just don't want to waste it <laughs> but it's the 39A Dare to Create from Morphe and this palette is really stunning I have to say the pigmentation is so on point and it just gives you so many different colors and varieties here and honestly I think it's a wonderful staple to have especially if you're a fan of all different colors and really kind of rich earthy tones so without any further ado Let's get into it. I'm going to start by prepping my face with my Radiance Primer from Laura Mercier. I have uh, a few samples of this and I'm just really, really feeling this. So I'm going to do that. I'm really into like hydration lately because this weather, guys, it's been crazy. So for foundation today, I definitely want it to be more full coverage and transfer free long wear. And so for that, I'm going to mix a little bit of my Lancome Tinny Dole with my Laura Mercier Flawless Fusion. And of course, use my angled airbrush foundation brush from It Cosmetics. Whenever I work with foundations that are more like long wear and that really hug the skin, I like to use a little bit more moisture and glow underneath just because I feel like if you don't, sometimes they can hug the skin almost too much and you can see a lot of the texture. So that's just a little trick that I use, but different strokes for different folks, honey. So in one of my last videos, I was, um, trying to talk a little more and just be more candid about who I am and my life and my struggles. And one thing I mentioned is the struggle that I have with anxiety. And um, I always wanted to talk more about it. So I figured while we get ready, it's a better way to bring it up. Um, because I feel like there shouldn't be a stigma around any type of um, mental health issues that we have or any insecurities. I feel like especially in the makeup community, it's an awesome way to connect and reach each other and to have like, you know, no stigma. Um, makeup is such an awesome way to create and connect with people. And I don't know, I just feel like it's important to talk about these types of things because not everything you see is always what it seems, you know? And one thing for me is makeup was a way for me to kind of hide a lot of my insecurities because it was something that gave me confidence because most of my life I've lacked um, self-esteem. So makeup was a chance for me to really, you know, kind of almost in a way put on my like my battle gear and, and be able to face things that maybe were a little bit more difficult when I didn't have that. Um, and I'm not saying that makeup has to be to cover up anything or that you need makeup to feel good about yourself, but for some people it's just really a great way to express themselves and that's just all I'm trying to say, you guys. <laughs> but yeah, I'm going to go in with my Tarte Shape Cake Concealer. Actually, let me get that one's kind of empty. But um, yeah, in speaking more with my struggles about six years ago I would say right when my my first son was um, first born I remember that I was um, just doing so much you know being trying to be the best mom I could be I didn't become a mom under the greatest circumstances you know I wasn't married I wasn't completely settled in my life but um, I fell in love with the little person that was growing inside of me and I just knew from the start that this is what my calling is. I'm supposed to be a mom 
um, but I was not married and it was a difficult time in my life and trying to find a lot of support because even though I was in my mid 20s, I just, you know, came from a very um, conservative family and a strict family that always believed in marriage before kids and things like that. So it was a difficult time in my life and not having the full support of the people around me as well as, you know, at the time, um, my relationship wasn't so great and I was going through personal things and he was going through things and we were trying to make it work at the same time and be parents and everything was just so crazy and new and scary. Um, and I guess I had a lot of underlying issues as well from, you know, my childhood that I hadn't resolved. So I remember just being in a, um, grocery store one day and it was right around the holidays and my son was still little and um, I was also a full-time student I was going to school I was working and just trying to make ends meet trying to get you know my son's father on board to be more proactive and to do more for him and it was just a really difficult time in my life and I just felt very scared and alone and I just remember being in the middle of a store. I had a shopping cart full of items and just fighting to get everything I needed for Christmas, for him, making sure I had enough money to buy, you know, food and stuff. And it was a really scary time in my life, you know, and thank God for my mom and dad. But at the same time, you know, it doesn't mean that it was any easier on me. And um, long story short, I was in the middle of an aisle and I just felt like this aisle was getting smaller and smaller and my legs just felt kind of wobbly and rubbery and I felt like something was just grabbing my chest and I couldn't talk, I couldn't breathe right. I just felt like this is it, something bad is gonna happen, I'm gonna lose control it's done, it's over for me, you know. Um, what's gonna happen to my son, he's right here. Like I just felt like the walls were closing in and I was honestly gonna die, either die or go crazy. And I grabbed my son, went to my car, got him safe and sound and I sat in my car, I called my mom and I just broke down and I was like, something's wrong with me. I, I, I don't know what's wrong. I feel like I'm going to lose it. I'm, I'm like, am I crazy? And it was just such an emotional time and such a, an emotional conversation. And, um, you know, I went back home that night and the very next day I, you know, my mom helped me and, and we found, um, a place to go to, you know, get therapy and be able to talk to somebody. And I ended up having, um, an intake appointment and, you know, just starting my mental health journey, if you will. And um, I, uh, it just, the reality of it all came crashing down and I was like, I'm not okay. And you know what? It's okay that I'm not okay. Um, through therapy, through reaching out, through getting help, I realized that I am not alone, that even though I initially, I went to the hospital thinking I was dying, it was just a panic attack. Um, and I realized that, you know, I'm not alone. There's so many people going through what I went through. And um, even though it was scary and it was something that I thought, you know, was never gonna get better, um, there's a light at the end of the tunnel, if you will. And, you know, it started, my journey and it also started the reality of facing what I was really going through you know like I think I had been avoiding the elephant in the room I had been avoiding that anxious gut that I had that constant nervousness and worrying and panicking you know it, it was all kind of building up to this massive and you know I'm not going to play it down because it was a massive panic attack but it was all leading up to it and before that time, I never knew what a panic attack was. I never knew what fear like that was. Um, I never thought about my life or my 
the possibility of losing my life. Like I just, I never really worried. I never let stuff in. But I think it was my body and my mind's way of saying like, you need to rest. You need to like get back to basics. You need to figure out who you are and what you want because I was so lost and I didn't realize it at that time of my life. And everybody pulls you in different directions and you're trying to make everybody happy, but then you lose track of who you are too. And, um, you know, I had been going through a lot with, you know, some peers of mine and putting on kind of like a facade for so long that everything was okay. And that, you know, I was just this carefree, whatever person, but inside I was really lost and I was hurting. And the reason I want to share this with you guys is because, um, I don't want to induce panic in you if you have, you know, panic. And I apologize if that made you feel more anxious. But I wanted to share it because I feel like it's important to talk about these things and to, number one, let you know that you're not alone and that it this too shall pass. It does get better and that, you know, you can learn to live and cope, if not completely get rid of anxiety and panic and things like that. Um, you know, it... I feel like when we look at depression nowadays and we view it, especially in the media, like everybody wants to put it as like the worst possible thing that could happen, that you're doomed, that you're crazy, that you're going to um, set off a bomb or blow up a school. No, 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 and no. Um, does it mean that people aren't out there that are absolutely effing insane? No, there's, there's crazies out there. There's crazies and there's sociopaths and nut jobs, but we're not all that. And, and let's not categorize everybody and group them into that. It's totally normal to have fear and majority of people have anxiety. But when it gets to a point that it takes away the quality of your life and that you can't live that best possible life you wanna live, that's when you know you need help. And that's when it's okay to reach out because if you catch it, you know, you have the chance of being able to take it, work with it and throw it back and say, nope, I'm not going to let you affect me anymore. So, you know, it's just important to talk about this kind of stuff. And I feel like even if only five people see this and they take away something from it, then my job's done. I've done the right thing because I know when I was struggling, that's what I wanted people to understand. I didn't want the people that would say, oh, everything's fine, just breathe, you know, you're making too much out of it. And it's like, if it was that easy to flip the switch and just say, I'm not gonna be anxious anymore, I would have done that from the first time, you know, but unfortunately with my particular situation, I had to go through multiple panic attacks and multiple you know cycles of anxiety in order to get to my comfort zone and to where I am and I went through therapy and you know I chose different types of routes for myself meditation you know guided meditation imagery um walking exercise you know music all different types but you have to find what works for you and create your own you know path and if it means reading books, if it means going on medication, whatever it is, you do what you have to do for yourself. And don't let anybody steer you away from what you feel is the best for you. Um, let's get into eyeshadows because I feel like I'm chatting quite a bit. But I'm going to take a mixture of some of these transition shades, the lighter one here, um, these two, and then also a little bit more of this kind of orange shade and work them into the crease on a fluffy brush. It's probably so weird to go back into like makeup after talking like that. But honestly, guys, I feel like it's so important to talk about um, because people, you know, people will look like they have it all together. And I guarantee you a lot of the celebrities that you follow, the models you follow, the makeup influencers and beauty gurus and YouTubers, you know, there's probably a lot more that goes on than all the glamorous you know, trips and free PR boxes and all that stuff. And, you know, I think it's just important to keep it real and talk about stuff. I'm going to grab a little bit of an orange um, and pop that into the crease now on a more tapered blending brush. This is the E40 from Sigma. And just kind of pop that into the crease to give it a little bit more warmth and pop.
Now I'm gonna blend down into kind of like this rusty color brown. It's like a little bit of orange in it, but it's also got a brown base and it's a little bit deeper because I wanna start with these lighter shades and taper down into a deeper shade for the crease. And I'm gonna put this now on a Morphe 441. And I'm gonna hold it closer to the ferrule. This way I can really get into the crease and put a lot of placement. And then when I start to blend, I hold it further back and circle and blend it out so that this way I'm not putting as much pressure and I can soften the look of this. But yeah, to say that, I, um, that I'm cured of anxiety would be a lie. I still have my struggles. Um, I still, you know, seek therapy. I still have to follow my steps that I've always done to get through things because some days are amazing and then some days are still really stressful because that's life. Um, but overall, I will say that I am in a much better place now. And a lot of my anxiety, I don't know about anybody else, but a lot of mine stemmed from poor communication skills. But um, once I started to learn how to communicate better and be more assertive and know what I want and go for the things I wanted, then a lot of my anxiety started to subside. Um, so I think a lot of mine stem from my insecurities and also always worrying about what people thought about me. And that's hard. That's hard to lose that. When you grow up with that in your mind that you're always worried about in the back of your mind what people think, it's hard to let go of that. But I'm telling you, when you start to let go of negativity and the people in your life that you know are just dragging you down and you detach, it's one of the greatest, greatest friggin' feelings in the world, you guys. Moving forward, I want to get into um, another brown that's a little bit more muted, neutral, and I want to pop that on a smaller brush. So let's see what we got here. And moving now into these... Um, more like cool toned neutrals here, these olive tones. I wanna to grab this dark brown and work that on the outside corner as well as um, slightly into the crease to start really intensifying the look. So we're gonna take that right on this outside V and we're gonna start circling that into the V here, creating a little bit more of a smokiness and then pulling it into the crease as well. So yeah, guys, another thing I learned through my journey was a lot of the mental games we play with ourselves. And I know that probably sounds crazy saying that, right? Like, um, like a beautiful mind or something. But the thing is like, when you're insecure, or you have anxiety, sometimes you psych yourself out and you instantly want to go to the worst possible things that could happen. And you know, you, you kind of miss um, all the great things that are happening because your mind is telling you to focus on negativity, negativity. But you know, way deep down, there's that little voice saying like, you know, but you had this great thing happen and this great thing happened and you've been through this before, but you've come out on top. And we lose that, that positivity. We lose that person that's still deep down in there that's saying like, wait, hold up, hold up. Not everything sucks today, you know? But, um, but yeah, you lose track of that. And that's part of, I have to say, the fun of the journey of getting through anxiety and working through things more is really taking the time to write things out and look at things. And I, you know, it sounds really dorky, but I'm a big fan of journaling and just, you know, writing everything down. Um, this way I can look at things, break them apart, analyze it, and also find out, you know, sometimes you start to worry about one thing. But when you break it down and you ask yourself questions, you realize that the fear that you're you're trying to avoid or you're trying to, you know, um, that's holding you back rather, is something that's totally different than what you initially set on. I have an Urban Decay flat pencil brush here, or excuse me, flat shadow brush. And I'm gonna pop this now into this really awesome matte shadow, this olive tone. And I think this is cool for like, you know, St. Patty's coming up. But these, these shadows are really creamy and buttery. And I wanna press this now into my lid and start packing this 
all over my lid space. There we go. Now I'm gonna take, um, in that same section, there's another matte green that's a little bit even deeper. And I'm gonna focus that just on the outside corner because I don't wanna darken the whole lid any further, but I wanna kinda add a little bit more depth on the outside corner here. I'm gonna pop a little bit of that here. So now I'm gonna take a Morphe M124 and it's slightly dampened already, but I'm gonna hit it one more time with some setting spray. And in this um, same palette, we have this beautiful kind of, almost like an olive gold shade. It's a really pretty golden shade, but it has that kind of olivey undertone. And I wanna start working that on the inside corner here just to really pop this look. And because it's wet, it'll really show on this matte shadow. So yeah, if you guys are watching and you struggle at all with anxiety or panic attacks, depression, um, reach out to me, like comment down below. Don't be afraid, I'm here to talk. I'm a really good listener. And um, you know, we can share our stories and our struggle and, and just be warriors together, you know, and get through it because it is, like I said, challenging and it is something that you learn to have to live with and, and some people will overcome, but some people will continue to struggle. But I think, you know, that there's success in numbers and sometimes when you have people that you can really reach out and talk to, it makes like the world of a difference. So um, really quickly before I work on smoking out the lower lash line, I wanna clean up some of this fallout. So I'm gonna dip my brush in some translucent powder and start to buff the fallout downward away from the eye and then out towards the corner of my face. And now I'm gonna take a bullet style brush. Let's see if I can find it. This is an IT Cosmetics brush. This is the 125 Smoky Liner brush. And I'm just gonna take that slightly dampened and work this into the darker brown color that we have and then also mix it with the olive tones. So I'm gonna take a little pop of the brown and the pop of the olives and just kind of work all those colors together underneath the eye. And the closer you hold to the ferrule, the more kind of pigment you're gonna get. So if you want it to be a heavier liner, definitely hold closer. Another thing I like to do to diffuse it and smoke it out a little bit more is go in with like a flimsy detail brush and we're gonna pop it into those warm um, transitions transition shades and some of the orange and we're just gonna smoke that into the lower lash line and it'll help soften the lineup and also just diffuse it so if it does decide to run a little bit it's more diffused and smoky all right now we can officially close up the dare to create palette and I'm gonna go in with my NYX No Filter Powder and my Morphe sponge. And we're just gonna pop a little bit of that underneath the eye now, just to add further brightness and finishing. And once I do this, I go into my contour, which I'm gonna do off camera because you guys have seen it enough. But if you haven't, just refer to my previous videos. And for contour today, I'm using my Morphe 9C palette just to stick with our Morphe theme because I love them so much. Okay guys, so after I went ahead and contoured, I also went in with my butter bronzer to warm everything up and blend out my contour. Now for blush, I wanna go in with an angled brush and I'm gonna take this really beautiful color from Lancome. This is the Blush Sotio Blushing Tresor. And it's just a really pretty kind of pinky salmon-y peach color. And I think it's just gonna help with warming up the face. And I'm gonna pop that into the apple and a little bit up here into the cheekbone. So let's curl the lash in. I'm gonna use my rose gold tweezerman lash curler and just really get into the base. Okay, now we're gonna set this face. So I'm gonna use my um, Scandinavia makeup finishing spray. Now that that's pretty much almost dry, I'm gonna go in with my Molten Gold um, from Maybelline, the Master Chrome, and I'm gonna pop that on a Morphe 510, and just turn and find that high point of my cheekbone, and 
really blend and pop this on here. And I'm also gonna take this on the tip of my nose, right at the bridge. I'm just gonna get this smudger brush here from BH and pop a little bit of this on there. And I wanna do this right in the tear duct, just to add a little bit of glow. So for lips today, we're gonna to use the um, lippy stick from ColourPop in the color BFF. It's a perfect kind of nude color. And then we're also gonna go in with the ColourPop lipstick in the shade Boy. I like to call it Boy Bye because it's just so good. <laughs> I really really love this look but I think I want to add a little bit more to the lips and I'm gonna put a gloss on there and this is the Laura Mercier lacquer lip acrylic lip varnish Whew, that's a tongue twister honey but this is the color Wonderlust, and this was from their Bohem chic collection and I absolutely love it so I'm gonna go and add just a little bit of that on top of this Okay, you guys, so this is the finished look, and I really love it. This was an awesome get ready with me. It's very sexy, smoky, um, definitely a much more evening look, but you know, if you're brave enough, rock it in the daytime. I know I will because it's just who I am. Anyway, <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this get ready with me, especially if you came here and clicked because of my story about my anxiety problem. Um, to further add to it too, you know, I've been officially diagnosed with anxiety disorder, general anxiety, as well as, you know, panic, panic attacks with sometimes panic disorder. And it's scary. Um, when you hear the words disorder, you just automatically think that you're crazy, you're not normal, um, something is severely wrong with you. But the thing is, don't judge the book by the title, if you will. Um, because even though you're categorized as that, you know, I think right away you want to think the absolute worst, but so many people are out there that struggle with it, many of whom don't even know they have it and they're just barely getting by. So if you have been diagnosed or you're on your way to a doctor, just know that you're already ahead of the game because you've already taken that first step, which is the hardest and most scary. And I commend you. And um, just know that this doesn't have to be a huge roadblock. It's going to be an obstacle course and a little bit more bumpy, but it's not the end. Um, and, you know, together, like I said, people can really do wonderful things. So the more you reach out and the more you talk about it, and if you feel like the people around you aren't there to help you or they don't get it, then seek the people that do. Um, I think that's the biggest thing because sometimes you can be in a room of people but still feel so alone, you know? So I think it's important to really reach out and speak out and don't be afraid to create a platform too for yourself and for others because I was so fearful about being open and honest about my problems. Um, but I think that there's probably a lot of people in my you know, group of peers, even in like my high school friends and stuff that I have on social media and this and that, there's got to be somebody out there going through it just like me. And that's comforting, you know, and I hope that I'm comforting you if you're going through it and you're here today listening to my story. So again, don't be afraid to reach out. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video. Of course, subscribe to my channel, you know, because it wouldn't be a YouTube channel if I didn't say that. <laughs> but I hope you enjoyed this look, you guys. And um, until next time. Uh